it was like we didn't know what we were doing. Um, and actually, um, the band was, had really, things had just fallen apart for that session. It was so frustrating. Um, one of the things um, was our, our keyboardist, Dave, um, for some reason, uh, you know, he just kind of, you know, he, he, he was absent inside the studio. What I recall was, is that I end up having to do a lot of the keyboard parts, uh, which is funny because if you listen to... I remember that. Um, you know, some of the songs, you can always tell the, the things that I was playing the keys on because the parts would be... <laughs> there, was, there was nothing really, you know, uh, you know fancy, you know, about it. Um, on the other hand, um, I thought that the, the, the session, the last session, you could see that the band, we were moving in another direction. That album was probably the more soulful yes. record that we've ever done. That's a good word. Um, and I don't know if a lot of our fans, I mean, we certainly had a, a quite a following. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people heard that record. No. And it's funny you say that it was, that it, it was falling apart. I remember that it, it didn't feel at the time like while we were in the studio although it was a little disjointed compared to the, the previous session, I didn't feel like it was falling apart. I felt like right after we were done, it was like something opened up and said, okay, now you can fall apart. <laughs> but I distinctly remember, maybe this is just in retrospect 20 years later, I distinctly remember that we had a group of songs, a handful of songs, where I thought, well, this really, really makes sense now. And you, the writing is really much more cohesive now. Um, and we took, and it was maybe because it was disjointed, we took more chances in the studio. I mean, even if Dave's not there and you have to play a part, that's sort of taking a chance. And then there were times when you couldn't be there in the studio, when you were mixing or arranging or something. Um, and that was, you know, that's chancy too. people really thought that you know the band had a great deal of, of potential and that we were going somewhere and I always felt that I was the one that kind of screwed everything up for the band um, in a sense well I mean uh, and, and I say that because one of the problems that I had as we were developing you know uh, um, our sound and things through the, through the years was um, I was a troubled vocalist because all the stuff that I liked, all the stuff that I liked, were singers who were not very refined. W were people who basically had awful voices. I loved it. And then we come around, and then you have this, this uh, very uh, polished, um, baritone, tenor-ish singer, and it just seems so square. So when we did the Colors LP, it was almost as if I did everything that I could to hide the vocalist in me. It's so beautiful. I miss you. Will I, be? I do acknowledge that it was a bit of a, um, a lack of confidence. You know, um, you know, in myself, and a lot of it had to do with just trying to identify with the things that I like, and denying the things that were just absolutely me. I, I am a crooner, um, and you know, handling the R and B edge was mm -hmm. something obviously was, was something very comfortable for me, but that particular sound to me wasn't what I was hearing. I mean, the groups that I liked, you know, at that particular time was. Um, uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra, mm -hmm. David Sylvian, and uh, so anyway, when we finally got around to um, the the, um, the last session, it started to come out. It's like you had found your voice. I, I, well, I, I came close to it. I thought so too. Do you remember the, the feedback we got from Peter Gabriel? But it was something to the effect that that you know the band he thought the music was good, but he thought that the singer 
should um, focus should focus on his idiosyncrasies and expand on and exaggerate them. Wow, that was kind of, and that was something that stayed with me. Uh, but you know, how did, when you years. heard it then, how did you take it? Um, as compared to now, as you've been able to do that. Well, um, and you know now, of course, I can take it and, and be quite gone and, and and all that stuff. But at the time. It was tough because what it meant was we weren't going to get signed to his label. Right. So that was devastating. It took years for that to really um, have some really deep meaning. And and I would say that when it really connected was at some point I, I went to London. And I remember going over there and I worked at Buzzo's as, as you know, that's a local music store. In, in Geneseo and one of my uh, jobs there was I was the buyer of imports I used to buy most of the stock <laughs> so I, I just kind of fell in love um, with a, a lot of European and stuff that was coming out of Japan and there's this interesting thing that can happen to people where after a while you, you get this snobbish thing where it's almost as if anything that's not American is so much better than we, everything else. We were, and we were all caught up in the, we were, in the mid-80s. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who propagated that, but it was certainly the thing to do. It was definitely the thing to do. If it wasn't American, that's what we were going to try yeah. and sound like. Which is interesting, because historically, that's like the second time that that has happened in music yes. history. What was interesting was to go to London, and who do you think they were nuts over there? Everything American. Right, if, right. They wanted you to know, sound like that. So I think to me that was a flag that basically said to me that, you know, I really have to find and focus on what's indigenous to me. What I remember is when we got to the last session, I had sort of uh, put off some of that snobbery, left behind some of that bravado that we had at the beginning when we were just trying to be as different as we could. That was just for me as, as a player. Um, and then I remember with the last session, a lot of the songs were really new. And I remember thinking, well, here you are now, com much more completely finding your voice as a writer and as a singer. At the time, I thought, that is the natural progression. That is exactly where we were supposed to be. It's not 1983 anymore, it's not 1885. You know, and it's 10 years, 8, 9, 10 years later, this is exactly where we should be by then. Going into the session, all these things always start with a great deal of enthusiasm. And then all of a sudden when you get in the studio and you call up, uh, you know, a person and they're supposed to be there and they're not there. And, you know, that brings you down. You're just wondering what's going on here. How come everybody isn't excited, right. you know, to be here? And then that kind of, you know, breaks you down. And then you realize that, oh, geez, you know, this situation isn't going to turn around and we have to adjust to this. Well, one of the things were, you know, a lot of the keyboard parts there. Um, it's like, oh, gosh, you know, um, we don't have a, a, a pianist, a, a keyboardist. So I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. And it's not going to be something as cool as it would be, you know, if, if Dave were here. Mm -hmm. 